So we've split our states into the recurrent states and the transient states, or equivalently, the recurrent classes and the transient classes. Now, it will turn out that all transient states behave basically the same. But within recurrent states, there's sort of two different types of behaviour. So what we're going to do is we're going to split the recurrent states further into two subcategories, which we call null recurrent and positive recurrent. So this is, this is the distinction we had before between recurrence and transients, where we looked at the return probability, mi, and if the return probability was 1, we were, we were recurrent, and if the return probability, mi, was strictly less than 1, we were transient. Uh, now, the distinction within recurrent goes like this. We split recurrent into two separate bits, depending on the expected return time which you'll remember from the previous section we called mu i. And if the expected return time is infinite, uh, then we say that it's null recurrent. If it's less and if it's finite, we say it's positive recurrent. So finite, expected return time, positive recurrent, infinite expected return time, Null recurrent. So null recurrent states do come back again, but they can take an extremely long time to get back again because their expectation is infinite. Note that for transient states, obviously, if you might not return, and it goes without saying that mu i is equal to infinity there. So this is just about splitting up different recurrent cases. And that will turn out to be useful later on in the course. So in the same way as we prove some things about uh, recur recurrent and transient states, uh, we can also prove similar things about null recurrent and positive recurrent cases. I'm not actually going to bother to write them out as theorems and proofs this time, because they're almost exactly the same as before. You can try them out for yourself if you really want. Uh, but the first non-surprising fact is that within a recurrent class, either everything is positive recurrent or everything is null recurrent. So that's the same thing as before, that within a class, everything has the same properties. In a recurrent class, either every state is positive recurrent, positive recurrent, or every state is null recurrent. Which is what we had before. Also, uh, you'll remember before we talked about the case of finite closed classes. It turns out that finite closed classes are the positive recurrent type, because we said that finite closed classes are always recurrent. But in fact, they're the positive recurrent type. And so, again, as before, this means we can refer, refer to a class as a positive recurrent class or a null recurrent class. And if we have an irreducible chain, we can call it a positive recurrent Markov chain or a null recurrent Markov chain. So if we put together what we've just written here, together with what we saw in the previous subsection, just to summarise, we have uh, finite closed classes are positive recurrent, that's what we just said. Non-closed classes, we mentioned in the previous subsection, they are transient, whereas infinite closed classes are the weird ones. They can be any of the three. Can be positive recurrent, can be null recurrent, and can be transient. So if you are ever unlucky enough to find yourself with an infinite closed class, it's quite difficult to say. But for everything else, dead easy. Finite closed ones are positive recurrent, non-closed ones are transient. Uh, remember that we said for the random, for the uh, simple random walk, SRW, we said that P equals a half was recurrent. And we said that p not equal to a half was transient.
Well, if we think back to uh, the previous section, section 8, we saw that in this symmetric p equals a half case, we saw that uh, the expected return time was infinite. So in fact, this is a this is null recurrent. So the simple symmetric random walk is null recurrent. All the other simple random walks are transient. And there aren't any simple random walks that are positive recurrent. I mentioned this briefly in lectures, I think, a few weeks ago. But remember that the simple random walk is the one that just goes up and down. And the symmetric case is the probability half. We've just said that that's null recurrent. The kind of one-dimensional version. We also mentioned this fact that you could think of a two-dimensional simple symmetric random walk where you go each direction with probability a quarter each, up, down, left or right. Uh, that's also null recurrent. But if you take d equals 3, where you can go up, down, left, right, in or out, so in three dimensions, each with probability of six. Turns out that that's transient, and its higher dimensional cousins, d greater than three, are also transient. Uh, that's quite a famous result uh, from the 1920s by a, a Hungarian mathematician called uh, George Poyer. He proved this fact about uh, simple symmetric random walks in, in different dimensions. We mostly care about the one-dimensional type, though, where the symmetric version is null recurrent and all the other versions are transient.